Okay, so in this video, we're going to actually start with our raster adjustments section. I'm going to leave it in button mode so it's easier for you guys to see. And we're going to dive in. So this kit was created for DTF and uh, white toner printers um, to basically knock out and then um, rasterize or half tone their artwork. Because essentially what we're doing is when you're knocking stuff out, you're actually leaving transparency to, behind. And so in my test pattern um, example here, well, not really a pattern, but in this test image here, I've kind of given you a majority of the scenarios minus color blending, um, you know, colors into colors. You basically have colors mixing with uh, white and black or lightness and darkness. And then you have those different colors and or grayscale values mixing with transparency. So you have a 100% opacity all the way down to zero opacity. So what happens in artwork is every single piece of artwork is a completely different scenario that you have to basically deal with. Uh, so I tried to kind of nail down all the scenarios for the most part that people are going to be, um, you know, coming across when they're working with artwork. So if you're doing a knockout black, and the whole point to a knockout black is essentially allowing the shirt color to fill in for a color that you're removing. So if we're doing a knockout black we're generally trying to pr print on a black shirt and allow the pr the black of the shirt to be the black ink but there's it's a twofold process so n not only are you decreasing the amount of ink that you're using but you're also softening the hand because what you're going to need to do is dtf and white toner have to have a hundred percent opacity for it to be able to lay down printers can't print transparency because at the end of the day it's going to print dots the resolution of those dots is essentially what we're contending with on an inkjet printer um, or laser printers. Um, not so much laser printers, but like an inkjet printer, it, it's ink being pushed through a very, very fine mesh, just like in screen printing. It doesn't print a certain level of transparency. It just prints smaller dots that simulate a sort of blending or transparency. So that's why we do what we do. But the problem that we have is when we're dealing with transparency like these two sections down here the grayscale and the color values is because we can't print with that we have to be able to half tone them for them to simulate that kind of blending and when we knock something out a lot of the time we're creating soft blends when we knock stuff out so that's why uh, we do what we do and that's why this kit's so powerful so with this test image we're going to start with a knockout black so I'm going to kind of skip around this section here. The, the main core of it here is just the knockout black and knockout white. Um, I've added some more functionality people were requesting, but uh, we'll get into the later videos why it's very difficult to do this stuff. But uh, let's, let's jump in. So we'll start with knockout black. Here's the image. You can see everything here. And I'm in button mode, so all I have to do is click the actual um, action that I want to use, and it will perform it. So we'll click knockout with black, editable. Okay, so now that's done. And what you're seeing now is a result. It's a um, two layers thrown into a group that has a mask applied to it. And that mask um, is knocking out all the black, which um, in a prior version we didn't have, but now you're able to edit how much um, black is being pulled away. So it's formulaic, and I'm trying to mathematically keep things um, exactly how they are on the artwork. And I'll show you by turning off the mask temporarily. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to hold shift and click on the mask that's applied to the group. And what you're actually seeing is the original artwork. There's no difference. But now you have two options. What I've done is I've separated the, the um, black and its influence from all the colors and dropped them into their own separate layer and then have all the color values. But you'll notice there's some black in the color values. It's just the way uh, Photoshop manages color. So I'm going to turn off that blacks layer. And you're seeing that I've removed the influence from it except for the perfect black here. This is just something Photoshop does. And it doesn't ha handle uh, transparency well either, as you can see. Um, but you have these options now. You can actually turn this off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, that you're actually getting the same image um, with black. So I'm going to hold shift and turn on the mask. And you see right now, uh, we're not, we don't have any black in the image, which is exactly what we really want and you want to let the t-shirt um, do the black talking for you in a sense so let's go ahead and take a look at what that is so i'm going to move outside and make sure we click on the group um, i don't want to i when i hit this uh, add garment color button um, i want to make sure that i'm not inside of the group 
I want to make sure I'm outside. So just clicking the group or, or a layer outside of the group. Uh, and then I'm going to hit this Add Garment Color button. So what this does is essentially just adds a color fill layer. Uh, that color fill layer you can change to whatever color you want. And right now I want to uh, set it to black because we're going to be printing on a black shirt, this image here. So you can see um, I've, the, the usefulness of how we've basically set this up. So you have the black of the shirt taking care of all the knockout black. Now we would have to make some tweaks here uh, to make sure it's exactly where we need it. But you also have the option to keep the, the, the fidelity of the image by throwing that black in and you can see what it's doing. But we're kind of doubling down on the black. This isn't exactly what the original looked like because we have a knockout being applied and the blacks being thrown in and the way that Photoshop previews. It's, it's a lot of uh, stuff and it's probably going to go over most people's heads, but you're essentially doubling down the way this previews, but because of anti-aliasing and all sorts of stuff. So just ignore that stuff for now, but essentially what you have is you now have the ability to turn off the blacks of the image and you can adjust the mask to your knockout, which is fantastic. And I'll show you how we can do that. So I'm going to turn back on the color garment, color, which is black, and I'm going to head over to the knockout folder. So I'm going to leave off that black uh, for now and show you what we can do. So if you click on the mask now, you can actually edit how much um, that you're erasing from the image. If I toggle that garment color, remember we have a transparent background. So we can now adjust how much knockout. So the way we're gonna do that is make sure you have the mask selected for the group. Go up to image adjustments. And my suggestion is use levels or curves. I'm gonna use levels for its simplicity. And you're gonna to have to have an understanding of how masks work. And the best analogy I can give you is, if we were sitting in the void of space, um, and there were no lights, there were no planets, no stars, anything like that, you would just be in a black void. You wouldn't be able to see your hand in front of your face. And the key point I want you to take away is visibility. So with no light and just pure blackness, if you can't see your hand in front of your face, you can't see. There's no, it's, you're just, there's nothing visible. There's no visible light. That's what black represents in a mask. And masks only deal with black and white. They're basically grayscale. So if black represents non-visible, the opposite is true for white. And that represents visible light. So if you introduced, if you were in that void of deep dark space and you introduced a star and you were close enough to that star, you'd be able to see your hand because you, now you have a light source that's providing visibility. That's essentially how you want to think of it. So if you increase the amount of white in your mask, you're, incre you're increasing the amount of visibility or the, the influence of white in that mask. If you increase the black by sliding it, this is from its standard point, point and you move it towards the white, you're increasing the amount of black. So you're basically kind of crunching down the values. So I want to show you that in action a couple different ways. So I'm going to cancel that. So I'm going to preview the mask. And the way I can do that is if I hold down Alt and click on the mask thumbnail, it's giving me a preview of that mask and its grayscale values. So let's go back to Image, Adjustments, Levels. And let's go ahead and we're going to increase the black by dragging its handle and we'll move it closer to white, and you'll see that we're increasing the amount of black, thus actually introducing less visibility, uh, visibility in these areas. So I'm going to hit Cancel, and we'll go back, and we'll preview it another way. So I'm going to actually turn off the shirt color, Preview, make sure the mask is selected, go back to Image, Adjustments, Select Levels, and again, I'm going to grab that black slider because I, let's say I want to do a race more. If I keep dragging, you're essentially removing more and more. Um, you're knocking out even more and more and more. Okay, So that's behavior, and, and the same is true for white. So if I click the white and I drag that in, you'll see that I'll start pulling more and more of the image in. So um, that's basically the functionality. Now my advice to you is make sure you have something to reference, like the garment color. So if we're, we're printing on a black shirt, make sure that's on. Now, you, again, you have the option. You have just the hues of the artwork. You also have the blacks of the artwork if you want to keep that in there. Um, so depending on the scenario, you might not need the black, and I'm going to leave it out for this one. So I'm going to go in, and let's adjust it. So I'm going to click on the mask for that group. Go to Image, Adjustments, and Levels. So from here, I'm going to increase my black. 
So if I want to knock out more. Now if I want to be a little more nuanced, I can grab the grayscale slider, which is the in-between of the two, and I can kind of push and pull until I get a really nice contrast I like. And maybe I'll bump the white up just to kind of push back a little bit to bring some of that visibility. And I'll hit OK. Now I feel like this is pretty successful, and that's essentially what we're going to do when we're working with any sort of knockout. I'm trying to leave you editable options, and you'll, you'll know they're editable. It'll say to the right that it's editable. Um, so that basically covers it. The last thing that you need to be aware of is if you've ran one of these actions, these actions are you know, dozens of steps long. I mean, some of them can be even about 100 steps long. And in that process, you can see that layers get renamed things. And this is the problem that a lot of people run into when they're working with the kit initially, is they think they can hit a button a bunch of times and everything's going to be all good. That isn't necessarily the case. So let's say, for instance, I'm going to hop back and let's see if we can try to trigger an issue. So I'm going to leave these two layers on and I'm going to make sure I have my artwork selected. And I'm going to do a knockout with black editable. We'll click that. You'll see it's running through. It's renaming layers, moving things around. And now that it's done, we're, we're basically essentially done. You know, we can make edits and stuff. So I'm going to click this layer again. I'm going to turn it on. And we'll run the process again. We're going to do a knockout with black editable. And we should cleanly get through. And you can see we have a second version now. And they both share the same name. Now, you might run into an issue in the future. I, I can't remember. I did a little bit of testing. We'll find out over time. And hopefully, I'll be able to change it. Sometimes, I'm unable to change it because you're just going to have to be aware of. To fix some of these issues, you're going to have to just rename the group. And then you can run the process again. Because in the process, in the middle of the actions, it's looking for that name. And if you already have that name on the board in an area that it, it wasn't, it, it's, it's about to be created, it can screw up the action. So sometimes renaming stuff after you're done works to your benefit if you run into an issue where a dialogue pops up and it asks you, uh, you know, a specific thing isn't available or something like that. It's generally looking for layers that aren't there or it's found a name and it's screwed up the entire process. That's why your layers will get all messed up. So just be aware of those things. I will have a troubleshooting video. Uh, the more people um, sit around and test this, we'll run into issues and I'll try to cover them in some videos later on. But that basically covers essentially the functionality of a knockout with black editable and being able to adjust it. So in the next video, uh, we're gonna jump into you know the knockout whites and some of this other stuff. See you there.